Um, so George, how did you get involved in football? Far out. Um, well, I guess when I was born, my dad's first present to me was a football and boots and stuff like that, like at yeah. my birth. So I think I was, I was, you'd say I was born into it. Yep. Um, obviously, being from a, an ethnic family, um, football was kind of that thing that sort of brought you together with your dad at a young age all the mm-hmm. way through. And, um, so that's how I got involved playing. I think my first club, if I can recall correctly, I was living in Victoria at the time, actually. As a junior, it was Bentley Greens under 10s. Okay. Um, and then I moved back home to Adelaide, played at West Adelaide, and then um, spent time at other clubs in the MPL, yep. at Cumberland and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. uh, Cumberland actually had my first opportunity to coach also. So I was a coach, started out coaching another 14 boys side in 2014. Yep. Um, we're lucky to to have a good little side who went on, won the league unbeaten. Mm-hmm. Um, then I moved on to Croydon Kings and, and did a bit of a, I wouldn't say a technical director role, but it was a sort of a, a junior coordinator role yep. um, with a bit of coaching and stuff involved. And then moved to Melbourne, um, spent a little bit of time at Heidelberg, Port Melbourne, uh, Yarraville in the State League with the men. Mm-hmm. Went back home, uh, spent a year at Salisbury United in Adelaide with yep. the men there. Um, at the halfway point of the year, took over as the head coach and mm-hmm. um, we steered our way out of relegation, which was good. Yeah. From there, back to Melbourne, spent a little bit of time at South and then uh, Avondale last year and then came up to Brisbane. Awesome. So it's been a bit of a, an up and down quick journey. Yeah, quite a journey um, between Melbourne yeah. and Adelaide across the game. Yeah. And now you're up in Queensland. Yes. Yeah, um, sunny Queensland. Sunny Queensland. Oh, so of... You're wearing a hoodie and I'm wearing a T-shirt. Exactly. That sums it up right there. <laughs> Speaking of um, your experience, you've seen quite a bit in your journey in, as a coach. Um, what are some of the differences that you've noticed between the three states that you've been in? Uh, to be honest, football in Victoria is a monster. It's not a bad monster. It's a good monster. It's it's yeah. huge. Um, there's obviously a lot of things that that get done there that when you look at it in terms of Australia, it's probably one of the that's probably the big competitions mm-hmm. over there. The, the Melbourne, especially Melbourne and Sydney. Yeah. Um, a lot of money and stuff gets thrown around, especially in the men's game. Um, the female game is starting to head that way, from what I can see, mm-hmm. which is good. Um, South Australia, I think the quality of the football is rather good. Um, the women's league there is actually probably improving as well, which is good. Mm-hmm. Um, Queensland is probably a very underrated state football in terms of style and quality, I yeah. think. So, yeah. Um, and having a look at what you've seen, are there any takeaways that each of the states could probably adapt or implement? I know it's a little bit difficult right about now, but maybe just having a look at maybe some things that South Australia is doing that Victoria could do and vice versa. Yeah, it's... it's um it's obviously been a strange year, so yeah. to be able to take anything away from Queensland, and I, I don't really want to do Queensland an injustice yeah. by throwing them under the bus. So, mind you, I think they've they've done okay through this time in in taking their time in making the decisions, mm-hmm. not being rushed into them. Um, the one thing I'd say is everyone should probably take a page out of F Football SA's book and actually have clarity on what's going on. Yeah. Um, I know. Speaking to coaches there, they they started contact training on Monday, okay. and on the twenty fifth of June they're playing. Yep. So, um, but they've had real clarity. They've spoken with clubs about what they want, how they want the season to finish, and things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, I know football Queensland has done a lot of that. I think football Victoria has been a little bit. Uh, it's been a bit murky on mm. both sides. Clubs don't know what they want to do. The yeah. federation aren't sure, and the federation I think. 
don't want to be rushed into decisions. Yeah. So yeah, it's become a little bit murky there. It's a tough one. So I think this, I think clarity, clarity is the main thing at this yep. at this time with everyone. Um, overall, I think the way that the structures are, are quite good. I think promotion relegation, I think in the women's game, probably will need to be something that that comes in. Mm-hmm. Um, I know South Australia do have it. Yeah. Um, I know that I think the first year in Victoria they weren't going to have it. Um, in the from MPL to whatever they're calling the second tier now, mm-hmm. um, and here they don't have it at all. I just I think it doesn't make teams that are at the bottom accountable. And and I'll be honest, up here when I came here, Western Pride were one of those clubs. Yep, one of those clubs that weren't moving with the times. And mm-hmm. when you don't move with the times, you fall behind. And and then you bring down the standard of a lot of things as well. So whilst we tried to to make changes, um, they weren't they weren't able to happen. So I think promotion and relegation become a really really big thing. Yeah, no, well said there. I think it just keeps everyone on their toes a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, thank you for your time. I appreciate you joining no us. No problem. All good.